do what I will. Are you going to put it in there? Okay. Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here. I know you're all off school today, it's President's Day, but I'm here at the middle school because uh, chemistry's on my mind. See, you just saw I grabbed some hydrochloric acid. Now, this is what we use in our zinc and hydrochloric acid lab, which is exactly what I'm gonna be talking about today. <laughs> I learned a lot in this lab. Hopefully you did too. Um, first, on an unrelated note, I learned that when you give students your phone, you need to prepare for them to take selfies. See? Second of all, I learned that this lab is a great way to teach chemical reactions. There was actually two chemical reactions that you saw. One, when you reacted the zinc, which you can see here in this Petri dish, with hydrochloric acid, which you saw me carry in earlier. Okay? When we did this, we did inside an Erlenmeyer flask. We'll get to that in a minute. But the second chemical reaction came when you took your balloon after it was filled up with um, whatever gas it was that was produced. We'll talk about that later. And uh, you reacted it with oxygen in the air, okay? We know that because it was lighting on fire, okay? Therefore, it was reacting with oxygen. And that was the very, very cool and very, very shocking explosions that you saw at the beginning of this video which uh, if you go back and rewatch that, check out some of the students' reactions. I always like their eyes when they see that occur for the first time. Let's talk about the properties of hydrochloric acid. The first word that I see other than hydrochloric acid is danger, hazard alert. That's because hydrochloric acid is corrosive. It's an acid, it means to gnaw human flesh. Bing, I have safety glasses on, and that's really important. This material, not a whole lot to be concerned with here. This is zinc. It's a naturally occurring element within Earth's crust, okay? Um, and it is an element, uh, capital Z, little n, and this is what we're reacting with, okay? I'm gonna take some zinc in here, okay? And I am noticing some things. First off, we see something emanating from the top of the Erlenmeyer flask here, okay? There's some sort of grayish substance, okay? Give me a moment here. Okay, there's our balloon growing very, 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 very quickly, okay? Let's work some of that gas up here. There's a gas that is obviously getting produced and I'm capturing it inside this balloon. We see a lot of condensation forming around the inside of this Erlenmeyer flask. If I pick this up carefully, okay? because it's very, very hot, um, which is, by the way, another observation that you would want to put down. Temperature is increasing. We call this an exothermic reaction. It means to release heat, okay? It's getting hotter because it's releasing heat as those chemical bonds are breaking apart. The zinc, which used to look like this, now is almost completely broken apart, okay? We actually burned a hole in the balloon and you can see. So let's try this again. Remember HCl plus zinc down here. Something's getting produced in here. It's a gas. Now we can do two tests to try to figure out what this is, but I first want to stress whatever in this is in this balloon couldn't have ended up there if it wasn't in our reactants to begin with. HCl plus zinc is what we reacted in this Erlenmeyer flask. That means we had hydrogen, chlorine, and zinc, which means we couldn't have something in this balloon that wasn't there to start with. I'll give you an example. One of the things that people said could be in the balloon was helium. Helium couldn't be in the balloon because we didn't have it in our reactants to begin with. The chemical symbol for helium is capital H little e. You can't just get it out of nowhere. It's got to come from our reactants. Whatever's in this balloon has to be either a single element of hydrogen, chlorine, or zinc, or some combinations of those elements to form a molecule. 
We can't have something that wasn't there. Evidence that there is a gas inside this balloon to try to determine what it is is obviously it expanded, okay? We can see there's something filling the balloon. If I let it go, there is something in here that is floating, meaning the gas that's inside this balloon is less dense than the rest of the air in this room. That's why a lot of people said helium because we know of a gas that does this. Well, how do we know it's not helium? One, it's not in our reactants. But number two is, well, have you ever heard of the Hindenburg? When we reacted hydrochloric acid, or HCl, with zinc, or Zn, we created two products. One of those products is the one we most likely noticed, and that was the gas inside of the balloon. What's the gas? The gas is hydrogen. How do we know that it's hydrogen? Well, number one, it's a product that had to come from somewhere. Where did it come from? It's the hydrogen atom that was in the hydrochloric acid to begin with. So what happened to that chlorine that used to be bonded with the hydrogen? That chlorine has now attached itself to the zinc, creating a whole new molecule called zinc chloride. So that equation in full is HCl plus Zn gives you H2 hydrogen gas and zinc chloride or ZnCl2. Second chemical reaction was what you had in the balloon. When you exploded the balloon, you were reacting the hydrogen gas with oxygen. And let's talk about how we knew that was hydrogen gas. Number one, it floated. It was less dense than air. That is a property of hydrogen. Number two, it was flammable. We know this because it was flammable. It exploded when we reacted it with oxygen. We add a little bit of heat just to get that reaction going. Hydrogen reacted with oxygen or O2 and that gave us one product which was water. H2O. H2 plus O2 gives you water. Notice when I felt the inside of the balloon it felt wet because the product of that reaction is water. Have a good day, everybody.